Good morning and welcome to Worship at St. Paul's. We have a couple of announcements this morning. First is that coffee hour will happen after the service. You can find the, the Zoom link on our website and at www.stpaulschatham.org. And stay tuned because we will be offering something new starting in August. We will have in-person outdoor worship. So stay tuned for details. However, if you choose to stay home, you will still have the option to worship because we will be live streaming that, those services online and continue with that through the summer. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to offer praise, to hear God's holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others, those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation, and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship God. Let us pray in silence. Then with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the Father, and to the Son, and, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We will read the psalm responsibly by whole verse. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the lights around me turn to night. Darkness is not to you, is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Search me out, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look well whether there be wickedness in me, and lead me in the way that is everlasting. <clears throat> the first reading is a reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. 
And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head, and he set it up for a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called the place Bethel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we await for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Jesus put before the crowds, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves, slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. 
And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seeds are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Last week, Bunker and I took a drive up to Wilton, New York, just north of Saratoga Springs, to take a guided tour of the Ulysses S. Grant Historic Cottage. Our interest in Ulysses Grant's life was piqued by the History Channel's three-part documentary series. In fact, now both Bunker and Patrick have read Ron Chernow's extensive book on Grant's life and are even diving into his personal memoirs, which were completed just prior to his death at the cottage we visited in New York. His life as a four-star general and a two-term president of the United States is certainly full of valor and notable accomplishments, but his life is also fascinating because it included countless failures as a businessman, struggles as a financier, and problems as a judge of other people's character. The same was true for Jacob the focus of our first reading from Genesis this morning. Jacob, like Abraham and Isaac, is a patriarch of the Hebrew people, and yet his life, perhaps more than any other person in Genesis, was filled with struggle and conflict. Even before he was born, and certainly after, there was a struggle between himself and his twin brother Esau. There was struggle between himself and his uncle Laban, between his wives, Rachel and Leah, and even between his children, Joseph and his other brothers. And yet, as our reading describes today, on a night when Jacob stops running and needs to sleep, he has a dream of a stairway, a ladder, which bridges the gap from heaven to earth with angels ascending and descending on it. And when he wakes, Jacob realizes that in spite of the many struggles and conflicts, the God of his forefathers and foremothers is with him. Later in Genesis, Jacob will even wrestle an unnamed stranger, thought to be God himself, who then blesses him and changes his name from Jacob to Israel. It's an important distinction, I think, that up until this point in his life, Jacob will speak only, he'll speak to his father only about your God. But after recognizing God's presence in his life, even in the struggle and even in spite of his deceit, Jacob names God as my God. These spiritual encounters prepare Jacob for leadership of the Hebrew people, but they are no doubt overlaid with his lifetime of wrestling with conflict, both within himself and outside of himself, so that all of it together shapes him to continue his journey of leadership and life. 
Now, I don't know why it is exactly that I am so drawn to the struggle and strain of both of these leaders, both Ulysses Grant and Jacob. Perhaps it's because life right now, life itself in this pandemic is such a struggle. Or perhaps it's simply because I myself have wrestled with what it feels like maybe more than my fair share of adversities and vulnerabilities. Now this all reminds me metaphorically, of course, of the time that I underwent a stress test for my heart. The techs set me up with electrodes all over and a blood pressure cuff. They put me on a treadmill. They increased the speed. They increased the incline all until a point when I could go no farther. And I asked the doctor if this test was meant to see how far or how fast, how much we could push my heart. Of course, he said, it's neither of those things. The test is actually meant to measure the speed of your heart's recovery after undergoing the strain. And I think that's where we are right now. Just like Jacob, just like Grant, living with strain, living with struggles, living with pain or fear, we are living in a very complex and complicated time right now. But being able to recover or even uncover our faith and our hope and our love right now is crucial. Now don't get me wrong, I used the word recovery this morning not to mean returning to the way things were, as if the strain or the stress or the struggle never existed. I don't think that's possible. But I'm using the word recovery in the way a golfer hits the ball from the rough or out of a hazard and recovers just by putting it back into the fairway so that it's playable again. I use the word recovery like in rowing or in cycling or in swimming. It's the action of returning the paddle or the leg or your arm to a position to take the next stroke. None of it denies what has happened before. It simply sets us up for the next step. And then, of course, the one after that. In her book, Scarred by Struggle, Transformed by Hope, Benedictine nun and author Joan Chittister uses Jacob's story as a paradigm for the spirituality of struggle. She speaks of being able to lean into struggle rather than run from it or fight against it. And through Jacob's life, she names eight elements that make up our human struggle. Perhaps you can relate to some of these, if not all of these. I know I can. She says we face change, isolation, darkness, fear, powerlessness, vulnerability, exhaustion, and interestingly, scarring. And yet Chittister finds the spirituality of struggle by noticing God's corresponding gift with each one of these struggles. So with change, there's conversion. With isolation comes the gift of interdependence. With darkness comes faith. From fear comes courage. Powerlessness yields surrender. Vulnerability reveals the knowledge of our limitations. Exhaustion uncovers endurance. And finally, scarring reveals transformation. Chittister writes, Jacob does what all of us must do if, in the end, we too are to become true. He confronts himself, in himself, the things that are wounding him. He admits his limitations. He accepts his situation and rejoins the world and moves on. Struggle, blessing, recovery. God has closed that gap between heaven and earth and is not only present with us, but moving in and through our lives and in our world. 
God is not sedentary, but constantly moving, constantly creating, constantly present, and enabling our recovery, our next steps. So look at the rungs of the ladder for your next step. And notice that there, that it's there indeed, is the Lord your God. say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope and we shall never hope in vain. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask, and it, our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness, and mercifully give us those things for which our unworthiness we dare not, and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God, who created all peoples in your image, we thank you for the wonderful diversity of races and cultures in this world. Enrich our lives by ever-widening circles of fellowship, and show us your presence in those who differ most from us, until our knowledge of your love is made perfect in our love for all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may when night comes rejoice to give you thanks. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We invite you now to pray either silently or aloud or to type the person or people you're praying for this morning into the comment section as we pray for those who have commended themselves to our prayers. We pray especially for Sandra and Sarah, for Karina, Patty, David, and Paul, for Phil and Louise, for Jennifer, Danielle, Wayne, Rita, and Ellie. We pray for John and Ruth, Steve, Mary Ann, Andrew, Alan, Debbie, and Shirley. For Jack and Joan, Barry, for Fred and Samu, 
for Carter and the Hewitt family. A blessing on you who are poor. Yours is the kingdom of God. A blessing on you who mourn. You shall be comforted. A blessing on you who hunger for justice. You shall be satisfied. A blessing on you who make peace. You shall be called children of God. A blessing on you who are persecuted in the cause of right. Yours is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the God who shakes heaven and earth, whom death could not contain, whose li who lives to disturb and heal us, bless you with power to go forth and proclaim the gospel. Amen. Amen.